The following is a presentation of the United Wrestling Network. match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from the hills of Pomp and Sop, weighing in at 181 pounds, the forever person, Honest John! Kicking off the action this week on Championship Wrestling with two guys that are looking to get back in the win column. We saw Honest John on pay-per-view and he tussled with the likes of Big Toko, Juicy Finale. Vinny Masaru in that matchup as well. And he'll be taking on Dom Kubrick, a very impressive athlete that came up on the wrong end of things with Manders. Yes, he certainly did. Like you're looking at Honest John, I mean, he's somebody steal his grandmother's cookie recipe and then try and sell it back to her. But all of that aside, very game competitive. That Howdy Price would buy it. No okay, doubt, at a discount. Introducing his opponent, being come to the ring by Viva Man and Halston Body from the Barbary Coast, weighing in at 180 pounds, La Mariposa, Dom Kubrick. Body shop in full effect, perhaps the winning ways lately of Viva Van will rub off here on La Mariposa, Dom Kubrick. We saw Viva Van last week. Got the victory over Savannah Stone. Very physical matchup that was. Yeah, and like you said, we have all hands on deck for the body shop. And Dom Kubrick now maybe making off with Honest John's hat. Oh, okay. How about that, Jack? This? I, I bet you're sad you, you didn't think of that first. Yeah, you know, I, for everything that can be said about the body shop, we got to say that this is the best looking group in pro wrestling following the fashion guidance of Halston Body. Check these guys out. You know, Jack, if, 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 he was, if they were following the fashion guidance of Halston Body, they'd, both, they'd be wearing moo-moos. Oh, you're just mad. And capes. You're just mad because his workout gear costs more than your suit. Sequence. Well, that's probably true. Right off the rack. Here we go. Bell sounds, and we're set for action. Should be a good one, and a, an important one when it comes to vying for position up that ladder towards championship aspirations. You see this left-handed shake that we always see from Honest John. Not many uh, takers on that night. You know, really can't blame him as to why. Surprised the referee still has his shirt on after that. <laughs> Indeed. Steal the stripes right off it. Well, we're gonna see who can steal a win here between these two. As you mentioned, trying to get to those winning ways of Viva Van. Dom Kub Kubrick is. See. Yeah. Oh, oh thought, thought he was going to go for it, but suckered him in, did uh, Kubrick into the side headlock. Little. Should be a great match to kick things off here, gentlemen. Of course, later on, main event doesn't get any bigger. The Dirty Daddy makes his first defense of the United Wrestling Network world title. That's still to come. Such a huge moment when he was crowned. It'll be a huge moment to see it defended as well. These two would like to get themselves into the mix for that if they can get back on the winning track. All these guys very unortho unorthodox, Jack. They'd be tough to scout. Very tough to scout. Great point. But both of them, again, very, very athletic. Both in great shape and both fiery right now. Honest John putting in an honest beat down on Dom Kubrick. Dom Kubrick, in essence, a former champion in the United Wrestling Ooh. Network during his time with SoCal Distance. A nice takedown there by Honest John, who really continues to impress. Yeah, again, all, I think people get distracted with the shenanigans, all the extracurricular stuff that Honest John does. But in his heart is an actual very, very talented competitor. You see Viva Van paying dividends. The body shop putting a stop to Honest John's momentum. Numbers game came into effect there. 
I always talk about the fashion of Halston body, and I bring it up because you need to be a detail-oriented person to be that stylish, and the game plan that he's brought is nothing but detail-oriented. Oh, you mean the cheating by Viva Van tripping up Honest John from the outside. That's a detail-oriented. Incidental contact happens. That's what Incidental. happens in the game. That's why we have a referee to call the action. Full full contact to look, and it's, it's churned the pendulum in the favor of Dom Kubrick, who really doesn't need any help. I, I always think back to his matches with Dan Joseph for the United Television Champion, just such an impressive athlete. Oh, here we go, love this, well documented. That bottom rope springs off a little extra mustard on that shot. And you're right though, the table turned with that interference by Viva Van on the outside, and it's tough to fight from underneath. Oh, looking. Looking for that dance of the butterflies. Nice double leg takedown into the full mount. Ground and pound by Honest John, who is, he's had enough here. Oh, what an enziguri from Honest John. Rocking the cranium of Dom Kubrick. Really bringing the strikes in, Honest John is. Ooh. And now as he hoists him up and brings him down. So explosive with that fisherman suplex. Deep hook of the leg, center of the ring. Only a count of two, says referee Chris Massey. Great to see him back in the stripes and back in a United Wrestling Network ring. It's been One, years. Yeah, 100%. Great to see him back. Honest John needs to capitalize. Directing traffic in there. Coming up empty. Dom Kubrick able to slip out of the way. Now what does he have in store? I asked Massey what took so long to come back to referee. He said I wasn't going to come back till I could actually grow a full beard. Here wow. we go. Look at this. Elevated up by Kubrick and high heat across the plate with the knee, Honest John might be out. No, not yet. Something that we don't bring up enough is Dom's power, the way he threw Honest John that high into the air, bringing him down and following up with the pin. I gotta think that that urgency to get the pin came from the guidance of one Hall's Oh, I'm body. sure, yes, oh yes. Many a strategy session. The war room is where they are. It's right next to the, uh, the closet where he has all of his amazing outfits. Yep and fans. Wrote that one up on the bedazzled clipboard, no doubt. And cover here, roll up now the other oh. way by Honest John. This turning into a very, oh, look out again. Round and round they go when it stops. Nobody knows. Many multiple near falls there. Honest John able to escape multiple times. God, he cannot, he just seemed to cannot get a hold on Dom Kubrick. You see the rake of the eyes temporarily Blinding on us, John, you would think. And now, oh, you see that neck breaker textbook from Kubrick. Could be all here. Beautifully done. He's put a lot away with that and does yet again. Here is your winner, Tom Kubrick. And it's going to be eyes wide shut for Honest John after that. Break the eyes to shut up into that neck breaker. And you see the body shop. Like I said, all hands on deck. Those winning ways now come in Dom Kubrick's way. Oh, I guess it was the detail-oriented body shot. The, de the detail-oriented, again, the fashion planning, the stylish planning. Look at the way that those shoes on Halston Body's feet goes with the outfits of Viva Van. That kind of stuff doesn't just happen. Right, thanks for the style file. Still coming your way. Blake Bulletproof Troop is going to be in action, and the United Wrestling Network world title on the line in our main event will be back. Experience the best action in L.A. at the Commerce Casino and Hotel. Come discover why the Commerce is the most celebrated card room in the world. The following contest is a tag team match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, at a combined weight of 4,012 pieces of rock candy, Flex McCallion and everlasting Richie Slade, Beef Candy! Exclusive action here as part of the United Wrestling Network and Beef Candy channeling Ken and Ryu, but I don't think it's gonna be enough to overcome the true martial arts expertise of one of their opponents. A little Hadou candy to start things <laughs> off here for oh them. Oh my God, you didn't. I did. I regret it, but I did. And introducing their opponents. First, weighing in at 245 pounds, Blake, Bulletproof, True, and his tag team partner, 
from Lafayette, Louisiana, weighing in at 219 pounds, he is the United Heritage Champion, Jordan Cruz! Boy, what a tandem this is. Blake Troop, who has been dominant thus far, 2-0, and the reigning and defending United Heritage Champion. My goodness, what a team, if they could coexist. They can get on the same page, but I think they can. They certainly look it as they come out here. And you talk about defending, emphasis on defending for Jordan Cruz, the United Heritage Champion, always stepping up to a challenge. And now doing so in the tag race with Bulletproof Troop. Wow. <laughs> Lex McKellion almost almost taking out our, uh, our broadcast. Oh, oh no, watch That's out for the That's how dangerous Flex is. You got to watch out for those feet. They can catch you at any time. Oh, I could do. Can't. Run it for the hills. They, they might uh, just elect to get out of here uh, now that they got a good look at their opponents. Heritage champ Jordan Cruz. That man, Blake Bulletproof Troop, readies himself for battle as he always does. Todd Kennelly, James Kincaid, Jack Farmer here with the call to action in this exclusive action brought to you by who else but the United Wrestling Network. Man, <laughs> Beef Candy really headed for the hills here. I don't think the, the stages extend that far in Street Fighter 2 as far as I remember. Now these guys, let's not count them out. They are a couple of world warriors here and they've worked together for a long time. We can't count out their ability to work together. That is true. Uh, I mean, and, and you've got Richie Slade, former Heritage Champion in his own right, and somebody with tons of history with Jordan Cruz. They offered Cruz the golden ticket. He cashed it in to become the Heritage Champ. But I got to think that's a title, you know, that Heritage title something that Beef Candy has their eye on. And at some point, Troop's going to have his eye on. So... I don't know, you know, I'd be a little leery if I were Jordan Cruz in there. The little glimmer in Troop's eye, perhaps, eyeing, eyeing the United Heritage Championship remains to be seen. Certainly Beef Candy on the same page. That's where I would put my money on Beef Candy. They have the ability to work together. They're going to be fluid together, where these other two, they're thinking about singles titles. I don't know if I trust them. Well, look at the, the Hadoukens. Coming fast and furious here to no effect on Bulletproof Troop. I don't know, maybe go with, try the Tiger Uppercut. Yeah, it's something call. else. I'd like to see a hurricane kick. Historically, they work very well in video games. This is very true. I think in the end, Beef Candy is going to look more like Dalsum because they're going to get stretched from here to <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, how much does this just insult Troop? It looks like he's at least being a little playful with it to start, but Richie Slade better be careful because he's going to get hurt. Oh, he tried to sweep the leg. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Slade. But yeah, I mean, tag team continuity very well maybe on the side of Beef Candy, but I don't, I don't know if that's really going to pay dividends. I mean, just look at, look at the strength and power on Troop. United Heritage Champion Jordan Cruz, that's a lot to overcome. It is, and, and look at this. You know, what I like is, is uh, Troop in his MMA days played the mind games. He would intimidate. You know, he's, he's not going to get suckered in by, the, by these mental mind games of beef candy. And now, now that actual wrestling takes over, grinding side headlock by Blake Bulletproof Troop. I saw Bulletproof Troop explode a pumpkin on, on social media with just using that hold. So if I'm Richie Slade, I am in desperation mode already. It's a good thing that Richie Slade has that candy-coated shell protecting him. Unbelievable. Your brain's the one with the shell on it. Talking. Shut up, James. Scoop and a slam and all the body weight down. I like it. A little extra emphasis on that one by Blake Troop. I mean, this is just, this is great experience for Troop to, to get this matchup too. You know, still young in the game in terms of professional wrestling. And I'm sure eventually he would, will run afoul of Beef Candy when he's on his own. And he's going to have to learn about their antics. It was Hold out the pin. That was thinking hand grenade. And now transitions oh. here. Yeah, thought maybe he had a bit of a, a Oma Plata there, a shoulder lock. Got to be Larry. He's got so many weapons. And a unique opportunity for Troop 2. This is his first tag team match. He's 2-0 and oh in singles competition. Uh-oh, cover here by Flex. But look at that. Powers out right back to the submission attempt. For all the jokes you can make about Flex, he is a powerful guy himself. The beef half of the beef candy duo uh, not doing much good right now, though. 
that left arm just being picked apart by a bulletproof troop. And this, we're seeing a side of his game that he hasn't really displayed yet in the squared circle, and this acumen to pick a body part and decimate. Welcome to Fight in 60, I'm Josh Chernoff. Let's take a quick look at everything Fight has to offer this week in the world of pro wrestling. Friday, December 3rd kicks off with PWA Black Label, Now We Conquer. Then it's GCW So High, which is part of the GCW Texas two-step combo that also includes Saturday's GCW So Alive. Saturday night, December 4th, begins with IWC Pittsburgh Classic. The NWA presents Hard Times 2, featuring Trevor Murdoch against Mike Knox. Then it's Lucha Libre AAA Worldwide Triple Mania. We round out this weekend of action on Sunday, December 5th with GIPW Fatal Reunion, the Nacion Lucha Libre Season 1 Bundle of 16 Episodes. As always, check Fight.TV for time and availability in your market, as well as our wide array of free content each and every day. I'm Josh Chernoff, and this has been Fight in 60. Tag team wrestling, and he did maneuver his opponent very close to the corner. He did. He's also not used to the rope breaks because that's something you're not going to see in an MMA cage. So those little nuances, something that Blake's going to just have to get more and more comfortable It'd with. It'd be interesting to see how things like that that he's not familiar with, if frustration creeps in. Because if he's in the cage, he's he, he's got he's got Flex dead to rights. I almost called him Ken, but he's got him. You know, there's no there's no rope breaks in there. So we'll see how much that frustration plays a role. I was just about to say, at what point does it make sense for Blake to tag? I mean, he's been in control this whole time, but there's something to stay in fresh, right? No so. doubt about it, tag is made. Uh, I thought we were gonna relive a little history between champion and former champion, but Flex tagging back in. Nice single leg trip there. Looking like Cruz has spent some time at Black House MMA. Beautiful headlock takedown. And neck crank here by the United Heritage Champion seizing the arm. Wow, look at this crucifix. Here we go, and I don't know if Flex has a prayer. Goodness. You know, Jordan Cruz just keeps adding to his game. He's not resting on his laurels. He's been one of our most fighting Heritage Champions of all time. It's, he's, he's done what he set out to do to write his name in the history books as one of the great Heritage Champions ever. No question. He's been a fighting champion. Fought in the United Wrestling Network, various promotions and other promotions as well. Wow. Nice double wow. stomp there Maybe out by of the Super champ. Mario, not Street Fighter. Aha. Now he's going to need a one up to get to that corner right now. It's been all, all troop and cruise, but there you see from behind. There's that power. There is that tag team fluidity I was talking about earlier. And right now, Flex showing off. Right, it is to. tag team wrestling, the name of the game. And now frequent tags being made by Beef Candy. And they've got Cruz in trouble. And a shot from the outside by Slade turned the table. Now look at this series of leg kicks. Goes upstairs and drops the champ. I have to imagine that Blake Troop is watching these strikes right now, these kicks, thinking maybe he could learn something from Richie Slade. Okay. I don't know if that's what's going through Troop's head there, Farmer. Shot after shot though, Slade impressive. And he is physically dismantling the Heritage Champion right now and again, another frequent tag. So they are isolating the champion. Might be softening him up for a potential shot down the line. So paying dividends while looking for the win in this matchup. Talk about a shot down the line. It was Beef Candy's own fault that, uh, you know, Jordan Cruz really is, a, is our champion today. You know, they, they singled him out. They gave him the golden ticket and used it as sort of disparaging, you know, knocking a tooth out of Jordan Cruz's head, and it cost him. It lost Richie wow. Slade there in his championship. What a suplex from Flex. Exploder suplex there, exploding like Pop Rocks was Flex McCallion. And I am impressed with Flex. I mean, he went from more of a mouthpiece and a manager back to in-ring competitor, and since doing that, he has been very uh, impressive, and he does complement Slade very well. Yeah, no, no real rust to speak of. Beef Candy, such you know, tag team continuity. The nefarious game plans aside, what a picture perfect drop kick from Jordan Cruz. He needs to make a tag. 
can have all the continuity in the world. It's not going to protect you from a drop kick like that. Textbook indeed. Oh, oh. man, True pulled to the outside. That's a uh, Hadouk, yeah, give me a break. That's a learning experience, though, for Bulletproof Troop. He didn't see Flex coming. I guarantee you next time, Troop will be more aware of his surroundings. Troop a non-factor right now. Could open the door for double teaming here. Beef Candy needs to work fast. There's the fireball. Got the uppercut. Uh oh, look oh. for the hurricane kick. Did not happen. Look at the power on Jordan Cruz. Yeah, M. Bison-like. Indeed. Well, now you need to tag in the striking prowess of one like Balrog. You got bulletproof troop there on the apron. Oh, yeah. And now Blake is back in. And oh, to wit. Head kick, doing some head hunting is Blake Troop. Oh. Heard one of the true bets out there say click, click, bang, bang. And uh, Troop is delivering right now. Look at this double teaming by the champ and Troop. Using the champ as a weapon, squashing beef oh, in the corner. Double here. pins. They're both out. Hand grenades. Wow. Deliver. <laughs> it's a war zone. Tandem offense. Has, <laughs> has that ever happened before? Here are your winners by a double knockout. Jordan Cruz and Blake. Bulletproof true. Um, have we ever seen a double knockout in the United Wrestling Network? I, I can't say that I've witnessed one. TK could better speak to it to me, but what I'm looking at right now, no quarters left for Beef Candy, no continues. Back of the line at the arcade. You win. Well, Beef Candy came out here looking for a sweet victory. In the end, all they got was a couple of jawbreakers. <laughs> Great exclusive action here from the United Wrestling Network. Troop stock continues to rise and cruise on top of the proverbial mountain. What a team. Hey everyone, I'm joined by my old friend, Mr. Ellis Williams, AKA Mr. Biggs. You called me and you told me, you said, man, I got Car Shield and it worked. What made you get it? I have this old SUV, and I know the manufacturer warranty is about to run out. I don't want to get stuck with expensive car repairs. Right. So I gave Car Shield a call. Covers were very affordable, and there was no long-term contract. A few months after that, transmission went on my car. I took it to my mechanic. They called Car Shield and saved my family on $2,400. Car Shield is America's number one auto protection company. Their administrators have paid out over a billion dollars in claims and cover most vehicles from 5,000 to 150,000 miles. You'll receive 24 7 roadside assistance, courtesy towing, rental reimbursement at no additional charge. Give Car Shield a call today before it's too late. Remember, Car Shield cars go farther. Protect yourself now against expensive auto repair bills. Call 800-952-1286. He's ready to knock Effie out. Oh, oh, hold on. Wait, wait a second. Oh, come on. I mean, but that, that's a spike-covered jacket. I got to wonder if that might have been a little uncomfortable as well. Well, that jacket has been through a lot of battles, too. This is true. That, that jacket has also inflicted, I'm sure, its fair share of battle scars over the years. Absolutely. And the Effie chants have begun once again, getting under the skin of Uptown Annie Brown. And this is a match that Effie wanted. He was impressed with Andy's performance in the very first match a number of weeks ago and said, well, I want my main event to be against the likes of Andy Brown, and here we are. I mean, Effie could tell Andy Brown was someone that really set the tone for this entire, this entire show. The opening match of the first show of Championship Wrestling presented by Car Shield, and Effie wanted a piece of that. Effie is so hot right now. Effie is all of the buzz, all of the rage. Burning up the internet is Effie, guys. I would actually raise it, Effie is the internet. He's the internet champion in more ways than one, but very interesting because you have two athletes here who have never crossed paths. Andy Brown with a decorated career in the United Wrestling Network, former Hollywood Heritage champion, and Effie making his debut, essentially. I, th I think it's a little bit of Effie's story, which he has talked about candidly online, that after dealing with oh! some 
you know, substance abuse problems, Effie discovered new purpose and a, and a clearer sense of his own identity through the intense pain of, of the squared circle. Bottom line, what? <laughs> Effie said getting hit in the face was well, funner than being intoxicated. And a very inventive submission maneuver there against the ropes did the damage to the throat of Andy Brown. Oh! And yeah, you're and not going to find offense, an offensive style like Effie's anywhere else. He is uniquely his own. That's right. There's no one uh, quite as innovative as, as Effie for a number of reasons. Effie bringing different levels of creativity into the squared circle. Oh. And Andy Brown at the brunt of it. Cross body to the back. Effie right into a cover, hooks the leg. And Andy Brown gets the shoulder up, count of two. Effie does things in the ring that you may have never seen before. And also, Effie not only wants to prove how great he is in the ring, he wants to be a beacon of a much bigger conversation in professional wrestling. And that's truly what he's been doing as Andy Brown running for higher ground here, looking to recuperate a little bit on the outside. But Effie, oh my! Oh, Ooh, tripped up! That's bad. The resourceful Andy Brown using the apron to his advantage. And Effie landed very awkwardly. Oh, no! Oh, and we guys, we know we know that's the hardest part of the ring, right? Yeah, but Gilbert, I don't know if that was the kind of lucidity that that Effie was looking for in uh, in this in this sport. The face of Effie crashing off the apron. Can he find a way back in this matchup? Experience the best action in LA at the Commerce Casino and Hotel. Come discover why the Commerce is the most celebrated card room in the world. Welcome back to our main event of Championship Wrestling presented by Car Shield. Andy Brown remained in control during the commercial break. A vicious use of the apron on the outside. And then Effie's face crashing on the hardest part of the ring. And now this is where Andy Brown is so dangerous. It was twofold right before the break. Effie crashed down in a very weird way on his ankle and on his knee. I, I worried about his leg. And then before he could really get back up to his feet to see if it was hurt, Andy Brown smashed his head on the apron. I'm sorry, did Effie just ask for Andy to chop him harder? OK, he, he did, yes. Oh. Just, just checking. Well, Gilbert, you mentioned earlier, Effie yeah. thrives on pain, but right. there's Andy Brown with a quick right shot to the chin. Andy Brown so oh. well known. Oh, my. Yee. Oh, no. Now that hurts. But the thick daddy could care less. A nipple twister. I've never called one of those. I've been calling wrestling for 15 years. Never called one of those. This match has broken down oh, into no. complete insanity there. And, and Never called Effie, that either. the bridge into the cover, Andy Brown kicks out at two. And if it's effective, then... It's certainly different. Oh, oh crash landing. Bit of a Bronco buster there into a cover, but oh, Andy Brown kicks out Effie off the top rope right to the throat. Biting is against the rules, but everything's legal for the first four seconds, right? I, I mean, it, it would seem so far in this match, oh! Andy Brown with a face wash to Effie. And now once again, has him on the outside. Has him in a very dangerous predicament here. Oh, no, no! Andy Brown is so smart. You can tell he is a battle-tested ring veteran because he knows every way to use the ring and every part of it as a weapon. Well, that was not using the ring. That was using the concrete floor, a DDT to Effie. He leveraged the feet off the ring, Johnny every way possible. I think if you if you put it past Andy Brown, he would use any part of this entire arena to his advantage if it meant a win. Well, Andy Brown could be within moments of a victory. Rolls Effie back in, hooks the leg into the cover. Andy Brown with the victory. No, Effie stays alive. Andy Brown, someone that's so well known for strike-heavy offense, a hyper-aggressive, gritty style. And he, he's he's got the daddy in a predicament. And he's a multi-time champion on, in the United Wrestling Network. He feels like the United Wrestling 
network is his, and he does not want anyone to take it from him, especially someone like Effie, who has become so wildly popular. Look at the palm strike. Down oh! goes Andy Brown. The fishnet clad center with more gas left in the tank. Cover, Effie, no! Andy Brown showing so much grit to kick out. Brown calls himself that weapon of sass destruction, guys, and he's showing us tonight in championship wrestling exactly what he's made of. I certainly think you mean Effie is the weapon of sass destruction. Oh, Andy Brown would I, never call himself I, that. I, my apologies. Yeah, yeah. The you last of a dying breed gets a knee up to the yeah. jaw of Effie. Hold on a second. Oh, going for a cutter, it looked like. Maybe a stunner. Effie so fast. Oh. Effie into the cover. That could be it. Andy Brown still in the fight. Andy Brown refusing to give up, has such great momentum coming out of, of the premiere of championship wrestling. That's not something you want to let slip away against Effie. You're absolutely right, but Effie showing once again his undying resolve. There's no moment too overwhelming, no obstacle too intimidating, and now he's heading up top, but Andy Brown catches Effie. Precious right seconds. at the top. Ooh. Took too long to get there. Andy Brown trying to shake out the cobwebs here. Has Effie in a very dangerous position. Oh, Something's no. gotta give between Andy Brown and Effie in this main event. Not if. This is gonna end badly. The question is for whom? And both competitors firing off shots at such high elevation. Effie. Oh my, just headbutt after a headbutt here between Andy Brown and Effie. Both can give it, both can take it. This has become a battle of wills, a battle of guts. And now Effie, oh my God, going for the Sunset Flip Powerbomb. Andy Brown oh. with a vindictive right hand to the forehead. Oh. And now Brown off the second turnbuckle. Diving cutter. That's got to be it. Andy Brown with an emphatic oh. victory. No, Effie finds a way to escape. How about the guts? Boom. Oh my Finish God. Finish him. Good night. Andy Brown has won so many matches what? like that, and somehow Effie is alive. Brown has got to be asking himself, what is it going to take to put Effie away? What otherworldly resilience let someone kick out of finish him? Uh, Alyssa, we've seen Andy Brown put away opponent after opponent I with that strike. Nobody comes to mind that is kicked out of finish him, except for Effie. And once again, we are seeing the never say die attitude. He thrives off the naysayers. He thrives off brutality and he refuses to quit. And this is why the world has started following Effie, supporting oh. Effie, rallying behind Effie, because who will not support oh. a guy uh -oh. who won't give up? Oh no, oh, and no. now Andy looking for fatality. No! He had it scouted. Effie rolls through. Oh, hold on a second. He's got the shoulders He's down. He's got, got it. He's got it. Effie He's wins. Got it. Here's your winner, Effie. Just like that, Andy Brown was going for the package pile driver fatality. And once again, Effie pulls off a miracle. I mean, what an incredible welcome to the United Wrestling Network to to unseat such a dominant competitor, a stalwart of the United Wrestling Network in Andy Brown. Brown proves once again he's capable of anything, but the grit, endurance, and execution of Effie leads him to a Do you use Viagra or Cialis? Have you been thinking about trying Viagra or Cialis? What if we can promise you the same results for less than $3 a pill? If you're paying $20 or more a pill for Viagra, you're getting taken to the cleaners. Our pill delivers the exact same results for less than $3. We'll do the math for you. You'll save more than $16 a pill for the same results. Want more? We'll give you 40 blue pills or 40 yellow pills for $99 and add four more pills free. You save more than $500. Stop overpaying for expensive prescriptions. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know what to do next. You need to call now and get your 44 pills for just $99.
Stop overpaying for Viagra. Call us anytime, day or night, and start saving big money for the exact same results. Have your credit card ready. Ordering is fast and easy, with your pills delivered to your door in a non-marked package. Call now. Main event time, here you get a good look at the challenger, the Corn Belt Cowboy earned this title shot with a victory over the always tough, always unpredictable Dom Kubrick. And now a shot to dance under the bright lights and take home some gold. And I gotta think if he does, the beers will be flowing. The beers will absolutely be flowing. What a great opportunity for one called Manders, such a tough customer, rough tumble, and this is going to be one heck of a rumble with the Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson. There you see the champion making his first ever defense of the title. Road to the title in the tournament, defeated pretty Peter Avalon, Fred Rosser, and in the finals right here in Commerce Casino, made history by defeating Mike Bennett, become the first ever Unite Wrestling Network world champion, and that's what's on the line in our main event. Here to set the stage for this high stakes matchup, as only he can, Adnan Kureishi. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the United World Championship. Introducing first, the challenger from the great state of Iowa, weighing in at 250 pounds. He is the Corn Belt Cowboy, the one called Manders. And introducing his opponent from Killa Hills, 10304, weighing in at 235 pounds. He is the United World Champion, the Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson. Dickinson fired up, making his first defense. In his mind, I'm sure he thinks of many, but Manders is primed and ready, and he's had high-profile wins on this program and on Primetime Live. Kids all over the country grow up wanting to be a cowboy someday, but Manders actually went and did it. Those boots and that hat aren't pretend. He's the real deal, and we are in for a fight tonight. Those boots aren't just made for walking. They're made for kicking some serious tail. He'll have his hands full. Chris Dickinson, first title defense. Moment in time, TK. Sure is, and doesn't want that title reign to be short-lived. But he's got a tough task. I mean, a heck of a first defense here against Manders, someone who's making waves in the sport. And Manders, you know, defeated Richie Slade on pay-per-view on Primetime Live. Slade, a former Heritage champion. And Manders, trained by champions, trained under Seth Rollins. I mean, he's got all the intangibles, should be a good one. He's got the pedigree, he has that toughness, that football background from a great program in Iowa. Former roommate of uh, NFL Pro Bowler George Kittle, got Kittle into professional wrestling. That'd be one heck of a tag team if we ever see it, but singles action right now for the gold. I want to talk a little bit about Chris Dickinson. Someone, he's the champion. He's been fighting people all around the world for a long time, but now that he is the world champion, people from all around the world are lining up to fight him. It will be very interesting to see how he handles that turn. That's an excellent point. And Dickinson, as he, as he looked for the leg lock, but just the, the size, the strength of Manders was able to overpower and nullify that, looking for ankle lock of his own. You know, I think that the champ will be right at home in this type of grappling. I mean, we've seen Dickinson on Josh Barnett's blood sport. He can go that strong style. We've seen him on New Japan strong. I mean, the, the impressive thing about the champion is he is a true world champion because he's a guy that could battle any style all over the world internationally. Such a tremendously 
uh, well-rounded competitor is Chris Dickinson. Doesn't get the credit that he deserves for that, but to Jack Farmer's point, you know, he's been the hunter his entire career. You know, he came to Primetime Live looking for validation, looking for competition. Now he's here, he's going to be the hunted now. And here's a, here's a point got to make here, guys. You know, if Dickinson does elect to pick a body part, go after the arm, he might take away one of those primary weapons. We saw it on display against Richie Slade. Might take away that lariat of Manders. Well, that's one of the strengths of Manders. You know, you can try to beat him with other types of wrestling. You can wrestle him. You can try to do anything you want. But at the end of the day, he's going to slug you as hard as he can. He's going to hit you with that arm. I think unless you rip that arm out of its socket, he's still going to run you over. Yeah, I think the game plan, you, like you say, TK, you make him think about throwing that lariat. Give you buys you the second you need to stop it from hitting you. I think it's what's on the mind, however, of the champion. Yes. Continues to work on that arm because he knows that Manders is one lariat away potentially from putting an end to his title reign almost before it begins. Well, and picking a body part is how Dickinson became the first United World Champion. Why, what a Roke classic. What a classic that was with Bennett. Yes, no doubt about it. What we finally deserve, Cover could be a new champion right out of the gate. Dickinson, that looked like it woke him up a little bit. Look at his face. Could, it can happen just like that, snap of the fingers. Are you guys a little surprised so far? I know we're oh, still- Cover here. Oh, just, just escaping it. Manders making Dickinson really think about it. And now I think, on his heels. I think you are seeing that sense of urgency. And I think that's where you were going, Jack. Yeah, I was going to the sense of urgency. I'm, I'm actually surprised we are seeing such wrestling between two strong, powerful guys. I you, I expect a bit more of a slugfest here, but they are, they're going hold for hold. They're keeping body contact. Well, sometimes when you know you're evenly matched in one department, you're going to have to, you know, call the audible and try and try and find another advantage. And Manders, though, was able, you know, so thus far able to hold his own with with Dickinson there in the traditional wrestling. Does maybe that start to a little bit of doubt creep into Dickinson there? Thought that hey, this is where I really, you know, might have his number. Right. Yeah. I think it, you know, it's been uh, it's been a dead heat so far. Neither competitor champion or challenger able Look to get the well, single leg pick beautifully done into the front face lock north south position countering out of it is the champion great groundwork by both in the early going no one able to really get a distinct advantage closest we had was was manders nearly catching the champion napping not once but twice and, and jack to your oh. point you know wow now it's getting physical now it's getting physical in a hurry taken him out with the single leg in his own right, though, is the champion. Beautifully done. It, it, it's rare that you see a collision like that. Did Manders not get the better of it? Dickinson really taking it to him. This is what we came to see. And right now, Chris Dickinson seems like he is feeling himself. And if Manders doesn't slow down that momentum quick, he may find himself in a world of hurt very fast. Pro wrestling personified here, great grappling, great striking, two big guys that can do it all. They're not big plotting heavyweights. They are incredible athletes. We saw Manders arguably out-wrestle Dickinson moments ago, and we just saw Dickinson out-physical Manders and is currently following up on that. What are we gonna see next? Shot after shot. Crowd counting in unison here in the Commerce Casino. Dickinson just trying to unload with all he's got. Here's the power. Look out here. Inverted atomic drop, Manhattan drop. Call it what you will, but call it painful for the champ. Sizing him up is Manders. There's that three point stand, stance and absolutely decleats him. Shades of his time as a Hawkeye almost, almost wins the title. So close. We got to take a break. Our world title match continues next. Welcome back everyone to our main event, a true heavyweight Haas fight for the United Wrestling Network world title. And the challenger right now taking control, using his physicality, the one called Manders might be the one called champion after he, this. He would like nothing more than that. Chris Dickinson really just jumping right back into the deep end here in his first title offense. But you see, look at his face. The, the emotion on his face tells the story. Dickinson might be waking up. The intensity of Dickinson coming live. Oh, I see the thumb to the eye. This match has been such a back and forth affair. Every time it seems one of them gets the upper hand, the other one seems to battle back. Right now, Manders obviously on top here. 
working over Dickinson. You know, I think Manders has had the physical advantage ever since that three-point stance, that big flying tackle. And, uh, and it's been the champion trying to fight from underneath ever since. We'll see if he can do it. That is a position that Dickinson has found him in, though, you know, time and time again in his career. So it is familiar territory. Maybe that's just what the champ needs to get going, but that DDT could put the lights out. New champion on the way Ooh. to just getting the shoulder up. I thought we had a new champ. History almost made, and if I could steal a phrase from our, our former broadcast colleague, because now he's an in-ring competitor, Blake Bulletproof Troop, that was a bang-bang play. Before the DDT, there was a 12-6 to elbow. Straight elbow to the back of the head, illegal in MMA, and, and legal here. And that could have been enough to knock out the champion, but then couple that with a DDT, devastation. Devastation on display. The champion once again in a bad way. This is maybe the most sort of forward progress, most momentum that's been built up, and it's on the side of one called Manders. I just don't know that I've ever seen anybody sustain an offensive advantage and manhandle Dickinson the way Manders is right now. This is where champions are really made, though. Yes, he's won the title, but this is where he solidifies the kind of champion he's going to be, being able to battle back from a beatdown like he's receiving now. Will he be able to do it is the question, but this means oh. everything to his reign. Yeah, true champions are forged in fire, and, and this is a baptism by fire in his first title defense for Dickinson. This is turning into an absolute Donnie Brook and and slugfest. Dickinson starting to unload. Yeah, this is becoming more of the walloping melee than it is a pro wrestling match. Back and forth shots from both, as you said, absolute hosses. What does Dickinson have to offer back? Champion challenger exchanging here. Something's got to give. Dickinson seems to be firing up as he flexes, oh. and you see those veins bursting. He is ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Manders here, and this is what I came to see. Breaking down toe-to-toe, nose-to-nose, shot for shot. And trying to change levels there into the scoop slam was Manders out the back door, rear waist lock, but Manders so powerful now transitions to a half Nelson. Does the oh. champion, eats a big elbow, gets rocked, but now a spin heel kick out of nowhere by Dickinson. Almost using centrifugal force, took that elbow, just kept moving with it, lifted the legs, caught Manders out of nowhere with that kick. How many times do you see a single shot floor the one called Manders? Well, that's where that diversification of offense really comes in. I don't know if Manders saw that coming. I think that's what really made it so powerful is it's that shot you didn't see. There was nasty velocity on that kick. Yes, bad intentions, and now you see that shark-like mentality. Perhaps seeing the blood in the water is our champion, Chris Dickinson, looking to follow up. Dickinson has often Rocket. referred to himself as a great white shark, and he is on the hunt, apex predator to be sure. And I think Turnbuckle's only thing keeping up Manders right now, Snapmare changes his fortunes and deposits him on the canvas. And can the champion capitalize? The tide has turned. Chris Dickinson's ship in his first defense could be coming in. What a kick. Going, going, gone. Here's the cover, only a count of two. Just able to get the shoulder up was Manders. Sliver of light between the referee's hand and the canvas, and the lights look like they were leaving the eyes of Manders. That's true, but right now, if, if, right now, if you're Dickinson, you gotta be asking, what is it gonna take? You're hitting him with so much, and Manders is able to absorb it and continue to kick out. What will it take? Big kick certainly will help pay dividends for the Dirty Daddy, but that spine buster won't help. Could be Snacks new champion. Him up. History to be made. Oh. No, not yet, but transitions. Is he thinking Boston Crab here? Austin Crab, maybe a catapult. What does Manders have in mind? Yeah, I think he's trying to trying to turn him overweight smartly, pulling him away from the ropes right. first. Brilliant maneuver. Could you imagine if the title reign ends with this? Something that he's uh, experienced certainly in his wars in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And we are sat here at ringside, and I can get a close look at Dickinson's face, and it is in agony here. It is twisted. He is miles away from that rope right now. I have no idea how he's getting out of this. And the low center of gravity of Manders, if he can you know, sit that big body back, all that pain and pressure on the back, the knees, the, the uh, hamstrings, and elects to roll out of it, or was powered oh. over, and now you got the up kicks by the champion. Straight to the face. 
creating the break of the hold and the distance that he perhaps needed. What's Dick Dickinson going to be able to follow up with? Dickinson did a great job of turning defense into offense there, and I think Dickinson is the fresher of the two right now. One step ahead, oh, missile oh. drop kick, rocking the ring. Takes the big man down, the ground shook. Death Valley driver, bang a ring. Cover, Dickinson retains. Here is your winner, and still United World Champion, Chris Dickinson. We talked about it, we knew it was gonna be physical, we knew it was gonna be intense and high stakes, and it was all that and more. I mean, talk about a way to galvanize your title reign in your first defense. Very impressive by Dickinson. He set a tone tonight that you can hit him with everything you have, and he's going to come back with even more each and every time. And now we're looking at, I mean, look at some of these shots by Manders. He was a powerhouse. The challenger brought his A game. But in the end, Death Valley driver just sticks him. Center of the ring, one, two, three. Dickinson retains in impressive fashion. But boy, oh boy, did the champion have to earn it. You are looking at the standard setter. He just set the standard. He set it. That is one of the most intense men you will ever see. The Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson, a moment in time, his first defense now in the books. I think he just called the challenger back to, back to the ring. Mentioned the champ never met a fight he did like, and he respects those that have the guts to step in the squared circle with him. Look at this, iron sharpens iron. Great show of respect from the deepest end. Anders several times nearly won that championship, but Chris Dickinson still the United World Champion. And Mutual respect, that is great to see. Everyone wants to be the best in the world, but Chris Dickinson tonight says, if you want to be, the line starts here. Who will be next to step up to take on the dirty daddy? Chris Dickinson. Off to a great start in his title reign, the first ever as the United Wrestling Network World Champion. We will see you next week when, once again, it's time to fight on.